It's Friday, November 1st, 2024, and we've got a ton of updates for you. All these storms that we've been tracking got a lot of new information now. It's going to allow us to tell you the story of what's going to happen very efficiently. We're going to start off today talking about the Caribbean and the Atlantic. Everything over here is really starting to light up with activity. I'll show you what I'm talking about right here in a second. And then we're also going to talk about our next storm system coming in from the west that's going to cause a multi-day severe weather outbreak break. Here's the latest from the National Hurricane Center. Okay, we've got a 70% chance of development now. This storm that was forming down there near Central America is now starting to look a little bit more organized, especially on the models. There's more consistency with what's going to happen here, and we have a pretty good confidence now that this is going to turn into at least a tropical depression as it approaches areas just to the west of Jamaica, maybe just to the south of Jamaica. It does look like it's going to try to go up in to the gap between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba, potentially. But look at this, it's not just this area of interest that we have to keep our eyes on now. We also have this other low pressure system that's gonna bring heavy rain to the Caribbean islands and uh, the Bahamas over the next little bit. And then there's another storm force low up here near the Azores. Now, this one's not really gonna cause any problems for anybody. However, it is something to, I guess, keep an eye on, especially if you've got interests in Europe, as that's where the remnants of this will eventually go. But yeah, lots of activity in the Caribbean right now, but all eyes are on this storm. The latest GFS model shows both of those systems kind of swirling around. I really don't think that there's going to be much of anything come out of the storm that's north of the Dominican Republic. I think that it's just going to cause a lot of heavy rain for our folks in Cuba, uh, of course, over into the Bahamas as well, Haiti, places like that, Puerto Rico. Outside of that, I think that the energy from this is just going to kind of get wrapped up into this storm, which is where our eyes have to go because this is the one that has that higher chance of development. Now, the GFS takes this to the east of Jamaica, which is one of the only models that's doing that right now. Once again, the vast majority of these pointed towards the Yucatan Peninsula. But notice what happens. We've got all these big mega troughs coming through the United States. And uh, one way to think of these uh, outside of their ability to cause severe weather in the United States, they're also magnets for low pressure systems farther south. So if this thing starts to smell our trough up here, here, it's going to get attracted to it. And that's exactly what happens here. It takes the storm over Cuba and then into the Gulf simply because of that trough that came through. And then look, there's another one that might draw it even closer to the Gulf Coast. So the GFS here does bring a storm into the Gulf of Mexico, which is an unfortunate reality that we have to face right now. The GFS doesn't turn it into a strong storm, but it's way too early to talk about specifics as far as the intensity of the storm goes. Also, the GFS is kind of painting another Another separate system, potentially 160 hours from now, getting over there near uh, Puerto Rico as well. I don't know if we should put much stock into that. This is the first I've seen of it. So if that continues to show up, we will talk about it in the future. But for now, let's assume that that's a little bit of a glitch or a blip and focus on the storm that we have been tracking for well over a week now and understand that it is, uh, you know, a possibility that this goes into the Gulf. And of course, if a storm goes into the Gulf, it's going to have the ability to get strong. Now, that was just one run of of one model, the GFS, okay? What about the Euro? And, and what about more than just one run of it? Let's look at an ensemble, an average of a bunch of different runs of the Euro model. And you can see that it still shows a tropical depression going towards the Yucatan Peninsula or the gap between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba, and then eventually going into the Gulf. And once again, it doesn't mean that we're going to have a hurricane or a major hurricane, but it certainly is concerning for our folks that live along the coast, because this might be our one last storm of the year that really has a chance of causing some impacts here in the lower 48. I think that uh, Cuba and uh, places near Cancun probably have a better chance of seeing a storm right now, but of course, if it gets past that, we've got to start talking about our folks, maybe even as far west as into Texas. There's no specific track right now. There's no forecast beyond that. There's no science to it. So we're just going to keep an eye on this, and I'm going to keep you updated every time there's new information that comes out. But from there, we've got to move on because we've got severe weather possible in the U.S., that big trough that I was showing you on the other map. It's going to spark severe thunderstorms as early as tomorrow in West Texas. Large hail, damaging winds, and a tornado threat is on the table. There's a 5% probability of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of any given point down there around uh, Odessa, points south and west. And the severe weather train doesn't stop there. Once again, this is going to be a multi-day severe weather outbreak. A much larger area is going to be impacted by large hail, damaging winds, and once again, an isolated tornado threat. On Sunday, November 3rd, Kansas, lots of Oklahoma 
Oklahoma and even lots of North Texas around Wichita Falls, Texas, back down to the south and west. We are going to have lots of storms on Sunday, also lots of heavy rain. And then even on Monday, we've got ourselves a day four slight risk of severe weather from around St. Louis back through Oklahoma City and then even around Austin and Dallas. So those first two days where the risk is more back here, I think that's where our tornado threat is the highest. Right now, it's looking like the tornado threat might not be the main event with this day four situation because it looks like it's going to turn into a squall line, maybe a big damaging wind event as the storms move farther east. But of course, there's always going to be that potential for supercells in front of the line. And if that ends up being something that happens, we may have a problem here. Let's take a look at this day by day. Here we are on Saturday, 5 p.m. We've got rain taking over Texas, Oklahoma, up into Kansas and Nebraska. This is just rain showers up here, but down into Texas, this is where we could be looking at some actual severe weather. Big time hail is possible. At the same time, we're going to have some snow working into places like Idaho, Montana, Washington, and Oregon. This is associated with our next system that we'll have to be watching. And just look at how the rain doesn't go anywhere, okay? It's going to stay over Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, Missouri, and that region all the way out until Monday, November 4th. So we've got severe weather Saturday and Sunday. Also on Monday, look at this, at 1 a.m., we're going to have storms in Oklahoma City, Little Rock, and heavy rain, maybe as far north as up into Nebraska. We're going to start to see snow farther south, maybe into New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona on Monday, as well as the cold air from this trough is really going to start digging down into the Rockies. It's going to feel really warm out east, and then this is going to set the stage for our squall line. Once again, I think that late Monday, our severe weather threat is going to come in the form of a damaging wind event, probably from Dallas up through uh, St. Louis. And once again, this is the kind of storm system that could promote tornadic activity, especially if there is some room for supercells to form out in front of the line. But we're way too far out right now to talk about that with any sort of uh, certainty. What we can say, though, is that as we go into Election Day, the storm system is going to be with us, but the severe weather attributes are going to be less. So I think that there is a chance that we see severe weather on Election Day. It's likely going to come in the form of some heavy rain and maybe some strong winds in places like Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. Most of this up here is just going to be general garden variety rain showers as we go through the day on Election Day. Another big pocket of cold air is coming in to the west, though, as we go into Wednesday. This is going to bring very heavy snow to Colorado and Utah. And it's also going to set the stage for more rain in Texas. Yes, more rain in Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Kansas. It is coming. The, the drought that we've been experiencing here is definitely, we're going to put a big dent in that and possibly more as we're just going to see a bunch of rain come in. And also this is going to dump a bunch of snow in Colorado as we go through next weekend. But look at this. You see him peeking out down there. That might be Tropical Storm or Hurricane Patty. And that's the same one that we were just looking at on the GFS. This one goes a little bit farther to the west, maybe making landfall in Mexico rather than up here in the United States or in Cuba or something like that. Obviously, all the models are going to show a million different things over the next week or so. We'll nail that forecast down as we go forward. But like I was saying, the rainfall is very much welcomed here. I understand in the plains in the central U.S. up into the upper Midwest, but it does look like every day now as we get more data, things are going to get excessive as far as the rainfall goes, especially there in Oklahoma, from Oklahoma City to Tulsa, up towards Joplin, Missouri, could see enough rain to actually cause flash flooding, especially Sunday and Monday. So keep an eye on those creeks and streams if you live anywhere in the yellow or red here over the next several days. Once again, some of these places will be picking up on maybe 7 to 10 inches of rain. A couple of towns here, especially in Oklahoma, could see 10 inches of rain over the next seven days, and that will cause some problems with flash flooding. But we can see some decent rainfall as far up as into Michigan and as far south as Houston. So enjoy it because I'm sure we're going to have another dry spill here at some point. But right now, the moisture train is on. All right, we are going to be busy here at the Ryan Hall Y'all channel this week because of all of the weather that's happening. We're probably going to have another video tomorrow. We will probably have another video on Sunday. We are definitely going to have a video on Monday. And in fact, it looks like that's the best day right now to assume that we might go live. So Monday, November 4th, live stream probability right now is 53%. So make sure you turn notifications on. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. If we do need to go live, we will. Covering a damaging wind threat or potentially a tornadic threat from St. Louis down to Dallas. And that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next.
next one. Goodbye. Ooh.